What am I doing here? Ah, good morning. Welcome to worship. It's good to see you all here. My name is Keith Simmons. I am one of many people in ministry here at Central Okanagan United Church. And if you're looking around thinking, hmm, it looks a little sparser, there's a, a women's retreat at Sorrento, and so a number of our folk are there. Although I, I was telling a friend I was getting a, a bit of a complex, I wasn't too sure I'd announced that I was retiring, and I told them everybody stood up and applauded, and I wasn't sure how to take that. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you all here. Uh, and on this day, we're, we're kind of in a shift in season, so you're going to notice that we're singing, what am I told, a different introit and commissioning song. They're new, so just sing along. I think one of them's a, sort of a repeat after me, the introit, is that? So we'll do that with the choir. The choir will sing it and we'll repeat it. Uh, and the choir is, you know, a very important part of our music ministry, along with Jessica. And there are people who are joining us online, and they couldn't do that unless we had some people at the back who are looking after the technology of the place and working on cameras and screens and streaming and making sure that all of that stuff works and works well and works together. We couldn't do any of this without the gift of many hands helping us all. And something I, I, I do notice that there are a few faces that are new to me, and I wondered if anybody would like to introduce their family, Evans. Um, uh, <laughs> what do you think, Evans? Do you have some folk to introduce? We can bring you a microphone, though, so that the people on Zoom can hear this as well. They... Well, Keith, it's a, sort of a small miracle they all showed up. <laughs> 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 and this is uh, from... Uh, Vancouver, my daughter Lynn and her son Evan and daughter Nikki and uh, Carol from from uh, Winnipeg and Lisa from the Paw and uh, Marla from Lillooet. All right, and, well, and, please and, say welcome. Okay, very good. Nice to see you all. Are there any others who have folk to introduce or who would like to introduce themselves? Oh, uh, we will see you at coffee, I'm sure. Well, it's good to be here and to, to be in this place and to remember as we gather here on this land and this territory that this is the land and the territory of the Seok, the Okanagan people. It has been since, since there, as long as there have been people here. The Okanagan have been here, the Seok's people. They have lived amongst the relations, amongst all of creation and learned how to be part of and alongside of and with the relations. We had heard a part of their creation story this morning at the eight o'clock worship. We, one of us had wondered, Nancy had wondered about the Oaks creation story. It was during a time when we were talking about other creation stories. And so Jerry went out and did some research and, and found a story from amongst the Oaks people from a, a story that talked about in the beginning, uh, I think I might have this right and Jerry can, like, correct me if I don't, but it was in the beginning, there was just, there was nothing. It was all dark, and then there was water. And the creator had a thought, and the creator's thought was sun and light. And the light came over the water, and then out of the water came a bush. And the bush blossomed, and every blossom was a being. Every blossom was a creature, a part of creation, humans, and I think others were part of that. So think of that creation story, which is in some ways so similar to our own, in some ways so similar to how we might even understand the world that we all grew from the earth. No, there is much more about us that is similar than divides us. Probably something important to think about, especially after last night, how we, we are very similar, really. We are grown out of the same ground and we blossom and beauty in the same places. And to think of that teaching from the Seelix people and what else might we have to learn about who we are and whose we are on this day and on all days. And now I think I'm inviting, I am, I'm inviting Philip up to, uh, to. Good morning, everybody. As Keith said, my name is Philip. If we have not met, I am the student minister here at Central Okanagan United Church. It is a pleasure to see so many happy, warm faces amidst all this mist and rain that we've been having, which we do need. 
Jesus said, love one another. As I have loved you, so you are to love one another. The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to turn to your neighbors and share the peace of Christ as is comfortable to you. And those online, please also share the peace of Christ with each other. wanted to say a quick word before we sing our introit. Um, normally I would be leading this. This is a call and response piece of music. So today, because I kind of sound like a frog, I'm not singing. The choir has graciously stepped in. They will be leading you. All you have to do is copy exactly what they just sang. That's it. If you mess up, we'll forgive you this week. All right? <laughs> All right, so please join us in singing our commissioning Center Me introit. Let us find ourselves centered in the one and truly feel the presence of God as we enter into this call of worship, which is responsive. Earth, teach me stillness. As the grasses are stilled with light. Earth, teach me suffering. As old stones suffer with memory. Earth, teach me humility as blossoms are humble with beginning. Earth, teach me caring, as the mother who secures her young. Earth, teach me courage, as the tree which stands alone. Earth, teach me limitation, as the ant which crawls on the ground. Earth, teach me freedom, as the eagle which soars in the sky. Earth, teach me resignation as the leaves which die in the autumn. Earth, teach me regeneration as the seed which rises in the spring. Earth, teach me to forget myself as melted snow forgets its life. 
earth teach me to remember kindness as dry fields weep in the rain. Earth teach me regeneration as the seed, yeah, there we go. You did that. <laughs> now we are going to sing Bless the Lord from More Voices, number 46. Rise as you are able. Please join me in today's responsive opening prayer. Let us pray. Beloved, let us live into the thoughts of Henry Frederick Emil. All life is short, and we have never too much time for gladdening the hearts of those who are traveling the dark journey with us. O oh, loving, calling, sustaining one, May we be swift to love. May we make haste to be kind. Amen. I'd like to invite our youth lector, Ethan, up to read for us this morning. Mark chapter 10, verse 35 to 55. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Appoint us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I'm baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to appoint, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. 
When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognized as their rulers lord it over them, and the great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. Instead, whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be the slave of all. For the Son of a Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Thank you. I wonder if uh, people who are, I don't know, young, young at heart, if you want to come up and join me, I have a story and I have some helpers to help me with the story. Hmm. So anybody who has a script knows that I had another story, but then Cheryl and I talked and I realized I didn't. I had this story instead. So <laughs> it's very helpful to have colleagues to consult with. So I have here some, some things. Let's see. Does anybody know who this is? Oh, do we know Lucy? Do you people know Lucy? Okay, so this is Lucy, and she was in a comic strip called Charlie Brown. Yeah, is she, do people still see that comic strip? Do you still know about Charlie Brown? All right. Well, this is a football player. Anybody know what Lucy does to Charlie when Charlie wants to practice being a kicker? What does she do? She kind of plays football, but what does she do for Charlie? Do you remember? <laughs> so she holds the ball for him to kick. And then just as he's about to make contact, she takes the ball away and he lands on his back. That, that's what Lucy does. She's trying to teach Charlie something. I'm not sure what, but something. And so I have Lucy with her bobbly head. And I have a football player with a bobbly head, and I have a little teddy bear, and they all kind of fit into a story. But the story that we wanted to talk about was today we heard this piece of scripture, this teaching, and it said that Jesus had 12 people that he hung around with a lot. They were called the disciples. They were people who liked Jesus, and they liked to talk to him, and they liked to hang out with him. And two of them thought, you know what? We're just a little bit better than everybody else. Their names were James and John. James and John said, you know, Jesus, maybe it's time to talk about, you know, who, who's the greatest amongst us and pick me, James, to sit here at your right hand and my brother John to sit here at your left hand. So they went to Jesus and they asked him to do that. And he said, do you remember what he said in that story? Well, what he said was, I don't know that that's a really good idea because if you want to do everything that I'm doing, what's coming up, you might not want to do. And then he went on a little bit and he said, you know what, actually the person that's the greatest is the one who helps others the most. You might think that it's the kings and the famous people, but really it's the ones that help the most. And then I read something that was a teaching story from Charles Schultz, who wrote Charlie Brown, and he taught it this way. He said, who can remember who won the last three Nobel Prizes? And then he said, okay, well, maybe that was too tough. Who can remember the last four best pictures? So, well, okay, well, maybe that was a little hard. Who could remember um, who the 10 wealthiest people in the world are? Well, then he said, you can remember who the 10 wealthiest people in the world are? No, me neither. I just know that they're not me. Okay, so then he said, who could remember who the kindest teacher they had was? Who can remember that? Who can remember when somebody said something so nice to them that they'll never forget it? Who can remember the first time somebody said, I love you? Who can remember a time when they just cuddled with somebody or something and it just 
wanted to cuddle with, like my friend the bear here. Who can remember that? What Charles said was the people we remember the most are the ones that are kindest to us. And then we talked about that this morning and somebody said, you know, I also remember times when I was able to do something kind for somebody else. And that brings up the story that Cheryl told me I needed to tell today. So it goes like this. It's actually, if you Google it, it happens many times. But this particular story, there was a runner who'd run a marathon and he'd run, well, they, because it's both, it's, it's any gender in this runner. They ran so hard and for so long and so fast, they were in front of almost everybody. The nearest person behind them was maybe 100 yards behind them. And they were 50, 50 yards or 50 meters, I suppose I should be saying, away from the finish line and something happened to them. Do you know what happened? They completely hit the wall. They were so exhausted, they just fell. They were going to win the race. And so the person behind them, you know what they did? What did they do? They won the race, right? Well, or what else? What did they do, do you think? Do you know? He helped them up. He brought them to the finish line. And then because you can't cross the finish line with anybody helping you, threw them over it. <laughs> it looked a little strange on the video, but that's what he had to do. Apparently, you can't have somebody's hands on you. So he just tossed them and he won the race because the person behind him stopped and said, what's really important here is that I help you, not that I win. And so I was thinking about that. Who do you think, who gets remembered out of that story? Who do you think you'll remember? Who do you think, Sam? Who will you remember from that story? What, what do you think? Yeah. Terry Fox, yes. That's another runner, isn't it? Another runner who just kept on running so that other people could keep on running too. Yeah, somebody else who did something incredibly kind and thoughtful and brave. Yeah, who do you think so? The tortoise and the hare story, yeah. Yeah, we have lots of teachings like that too. That's my perseverance and keeping on going no matter what. So what we wanted to learn today from Jesus' teachings, which seem so old sometimes and maybe don't really work for us, this teaching works really well for us. If we want to be the greatest person in the world, if we want to walk with the greatest people in the world, then what do we look for? We look for kindness and we look for love and then we'll find them. I think it was a really good teaching. So now we're going to sing a song and you're going to go off and have some other teachings in, in Sunday school. I don't know anything about because Cheryl didn't tell me. So we'll see what they're like. So let's sing. We're going to sing Dance with the Spirit and dancing is allowed. So you can get up and make, make some moves.
Today I will be reading from the book of Job, chapter 38, verses 1 through 7. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Hmm. So Job, Job has been going through some very hard times, uh, and his, his friends, his neighbors, his family are all wondering what he did to deserve it, because he lives in a time when God is uh, filled with retribution, and when God gets angry, you suffer, you pay the consequences. It's your job to figure out how you got God mad at you, and then you can change the world, change your world anyway. But that isn't the case for Job. The way this story is written, he's a, an extraordinary human being who's done extraordinary things in his life, and then it all just falls apart. Every time he turns around, something new happens. It's as if he had a year of things happening, and another year of things happening, and all of a sudden he's left with nothing. And so in this, in this ending of Job, he gets to hear from God. Finally, he gets to hear from God about why it all went wrong and what happened and, and what, what, what the meaning of this is and, and why did I have to suffer this way? And he stands before God and he says, can you tell me? And God says, why would I? Where were you when I was making the world? Where were you when I created beauty and joy? Where were you? You weren't any part of that and really, you're not ever going to understand all of the things that happened to you in your life, and that's kind of about it for Job, except that they tack an ending on to Job. I'm told many, many years later, somebody thought, well, it can't end there. So they gave him back everything he'd lost, and it was a good ending, and people were happy with that. But really, sometimes it just does end there. And we're left with the questions, why? And we're left without any kind of an answer, really. We're just there. And we're there, I remember reading someplace, it's the journey actually, it's not the destination, it's just who's there in the journey with us and who are we along the journey with. And so part of the reason I, I brought the football player is because it's a trophy, actually. They went with bobble-headed trophies that year, college and bulldogs. It's one my son got, uh, most inspirational player, it says. Liam, the, the first game that year, when he was finally coming into his size, he was probably 6'2", then probably weighed 230, was a defensive lineman, and it was his job to make sure that whoever was headed for the quarterback didn't make the trip. And he, on the first, first actual game of the season, blocked, as he was taught to block, and then pulled back from the block, went to the sidelines, and he couldn't move his thumb. He'd... Uh, there's a little ligament here that pulls your thumb in this way. He'd blown the bone that attached that ligament to his thumb. It was gone. It was just floating, free floating. Couldn't move his thumb back, so we went to the hospital, and the doctor said, well, we could just cast it up, and you could hope that six weeks from now it'll be okay, but 75% eh, of the time it won't be, and we'll have to pin it in another six weeks. Or we can just pin it now, and six weeks, uh, he should have use of his hand, maybe two months he could start playing again. Of course, the season would be over by then, but... So, they did that. And we, Liam had all kinds of hopes that, you know, maybe they'd let him play if he actually wrapped the cast in something softer, but the other players weren't really interested in being blocked by his cast, so... So he just went, every game. Every game he went, every game he dressed, and he stayed on the sidelines, and he led the cheers. And he has this huge, loud voice and this incredible passion for his team and his community. And he led the cheers all the time. And if there was something going on in the field, you could hear Liam above everybody else, encouraging, having something to say, being there. When they needed water, he picked up 
the water bottle with his good hand and brought the water bottles out and made sure the guys had enough water. Later on in the season when his best friend, also Liam, but little Liam, because he was shorter, broke a collarbone on the other side, the two of them carried the case, one in each hand, and they were there. His job, he thought, was to be there and be part of that team no matter what, and to be with his friends and his community and to do the best he could with what he had. And he just did that. I was amazed, frankly. There are things your kids do that amaze you, and some of them are great. Some of them you wonder, but you know, then our parents probably wondered too. So just an amazing part of his life to be part of. And his team recognized it, his coaches did, and they gave him this trophy. They said, you inspired us. They had a great season that year. Didn't lose until I think the final, which was tough, but there you go. It was a team from Surrey and they were kind of nasty. So ah. not that I had anything to say about that from the sidelines myself, of course. <laughs> Maybe a couple of things, but yeah. You know. So I think of that, the people as a teaching from Charles Schultz, the people who are kindest. Jesus is saying, look, if you want to be, if you want to change the world, then just do it one kindness at a time. Look for somebody you can offer service to and go do that. And that will change the world. You'll be a leader beyond any other leader. That's your call. That's who we are. Not, not some kind of a tyrant who rules the world or a king who can make all the decisions for all the people and has to make the tough decisions that some people will have to suffer by, not some God who doesn't even notice you. Just go be the best you can be. Do the best you can to be in relationship with others who have some kind of need and do that. Just do that. That'll be enough. If we all did that, we talked about that a bit this morning too, if we all do that, the world changes. It becomes the world that Christ said it already was. The world where we in a relationship with one another can be with one another it becomes that world. This last weekend, Thanksgiving weekend, I went to Vancouver Island to spend some time with my wife, Laurel, who's spending as much time as she can helping our daughter who has MS and can't see very well, look after her kids who are a year and a half and four, four years and eight months. And I, you know, I spent a little bit of time there. I can't believe we actually did that. <laughs> Holy cow, like all of that energy and bouncing on He's a very energetic kid anyway. And, you know, there's been some changes in the relationship. So he's got more stuff going on. And, and Laurel's just there, uh, pretty much exhausted, but there, doing what she can to just be there. That's what we do. I think we do that with family. We also do that with friends and with one another. So I had that opportunity to spend Thanksgiving with them. A friend of ours was very kind to us lent us his house on Kai Bay, which is across the, the water from Paul River, and the kids got to come and spend some time with us and be out on the beach a little bit, and we made Thanksgiving dinner and, and had them there and managed to make sure that his house was still pretty much intact after they left, so it was very successful. And, and we had some time together as family and to remember what we were thankful for, truly, you know, the community, for friends, for abundance and for the ability to be there with one another. On the way home, I stopped at Mount Seymour United Church where they were holding a memorial service for Brenda Fox, who is a minister in the United Church of Canada, very well known by many people in the church. She had a position of, of power and authority that she used with kindness and thoughtfulness. Uh, she was somebody who worked in our Office of Vocation most lately. She worked at VST and she'd been a, a paid accountable minister in, in a couple of churches before that. But she, she wanted to go be a helper wherever she could. She wanted to see if she could help somebody become some part of ministry, some part of community, some part of the world. And we heard a lot about that in her service. And the reading we had today from Philip the Prayer came from that service. But we're only here for a short time. So why wouldn't we spend that time bringing love and kindness to those we're in relationship with. Why would we spend it in any other way? We don't have much time here. Why wouldn't we spend it giving that? Now we're a place that's often divided, um, perhaps no more so obviously than on election times, perhaps no more obviously than like elections that don't seem to resolve anything. And God knows maybe in a week they might, and who knows what that will look like. But it's important, I think, to remember that we're all there for the same reasons, that we are all trying to do the best we can. We're worried about our community, our kids, uh, 
the way the world is going, how things are turning out. And some of us want to go back to days that never were, but we think they were, so they might be better if we went back there. And others are looking for a future that might not ever be. And many of us are just here on the journey right now, doing the best we can to be in relationship with one another. I'm not going to say much more about the election. I, I lived a very political life. I was really engaged in election campaigns for a long time in my life. But I will say that, I mean, if you want to sum the whole thing up, just go look at the three leader speeches from last night. To me, that summed it all up. That'll tell you all you need to know about, about the different visions for how we might live together in this world. And once you find a place that connects you, then you're going to, we all, I think it's incumbent on us then to ask ourselves, why did that connect with me? What's, what does that say about the kind of community I want and how I think we might get there? It's important to be intentional about that, but I think the most important thing is to do it in the way that Jesus and Charles Schultz and, and many other people have taught us. Be intentional in the relationships that you're in. Love the people you're with. Do what you can for all the people you can, as long as ever you can, as John Wesley used to say. And do that, we'll change the world. We won't have to wait for every four years for some election to change things for us. We'll change it like we change it every Tuesday morning in this place. And I guess that's one more piece I should bring up. I'm trying to be mindful of the time, and your time that I'm taking. Tuesday mornings, you should know this. Last Tuesday, we had Thanksgiving dinner here on Tuesday. We served turkey rolls because they were the easiest to serve. They tasted great. I was completely amazed. They tasted, they were turkey. I thought they'd be more like turkey loaf or something, but they were turkey. And we had stuffing and we had gravy and we had potatoes and we had vegetables and we didn't run out and we fed 133 people. We used to do that once a year at New Year's. Now we do it almost every Tuesday. It's starting to look like that anyway, with something. We don't have any idea how we're doing that. If you read the e-letter, I already said that in there. We've, we have no idea how we can do this. When I first started here, two years ago, October, we were serving 20 people. And I know that years before that, we were serving 60 people or 70 people some days, soup and sandwiches. Now, we talked 100, oh, last month sometime, and we don't seem to be going down. We're seeing people from across the community, people who can't afford to pay their rent and eat, people who are new arrivals from places where they've been at war since the last war, people who are seeking, desperately seeking some place where they can house their children and their families in safety and have found this place and found out that despite Canada being the great place that it is and the wonderful country that it is, you still can't afford to live here, pay the rent and feed the kids. And so you have to go to food banks and churches and places like that. But we are here and and when we didn't know how we were going to make it, we were getting some donations from the food bank in Winfield, the uh, Lake Country Food Bank. We would bring those, some fresh produce and some bread. Every Sunday, Susan would do that because she volunteers there as well. And she would bring them here on Monday. We got a call from the Salvation Army. They said they're changing the way they're doing things. They have a lot of food. You know, you think we might be interested. Are you kidding? We said, yeah, would we be interested? Holy cow. And so we went out there and from... From two carloads of milk crates, we were at four last week. And so we had enough to set out in tables for people to help themselves to some fresh produce and some, some frozen meat and some milk. And then somebody else turned up right in the middle of Tuesday when we're trying to feed 120 people. Somebody backed up to our door with a carload full of stuff and, and offered us more. I was taught once uh, by somebody from another denomination who was talking about tithing because in his denomination, that's what they do. He said, what he found out about tithing was that the more you gave, the more came back to you. The more you give out, the more comes in. Well, that's certainly been my experience here. At this place, the more we give out, the more people come in, <laughs> and the more resources come in to help feed them. One of, somebody donated 20,000. I put 10 in the newsletter, but no, somebody donated $20,000 to our outreach because, I don't know, something big had happened in their lives and they thought that they could make a difference in somebody else's life by doing that. Things come. They do come. I just don't know how they come. I, like Job, stand in front of that magnificent creator and say, oh my God, like, how? And he says, look, or she says, or they say, 
look, you understand how the sun keeps going for a couple of billion, trillion years? Do you get how our atmosphere clings to this tiny little speck of dirt that floats freely in a universe so vast you can't comprehend it? Do you get any of that? Do you even understand how water actually evaporates and comes back to itself? You don't have to get any of that. It'll just happen. You just be kind. I'll take care of the rest. Somehow, in the midst of all of this, God's still there, breathing in and breathing out. And every breath is somebody giving something of themselves. And every intake is somebody receiving. We are a blessed people. All of us, even in the midst of all of this. Let us think of that as we pray. Let us pray. Loving God, there is so much we don't understand. We'd so love to just take charge and fix things. Help us to understand that by reaching out, by offering kindness and love, we are taking charge. and We're definitely fixing things on this day and all days. Amen. And now I think we're singing. Uh, I get to pick hymns. <laughs> this one's often, is an old favorite, we'll say.
Music and laughter, hands and minds, curiosity and compassion, what an abundance of gifts we have. All these gifts are symbolized in our offering. Let us commit ourselves in service as we worship God with our offering. We do not pass the plate here at COUC, so if you wish to give a physical donation, there are boxes at the back and at the side. There are also QR codes in the pews, and there is, of course, PA. Uh, our announcements today, um, we have a stewardship moment. I'd like to invite Jodine Dukes up. Hello, good morning. I am also a volunteer with the Central Okanagan Refugee Committee. And last month we welcomed not one, but two families. Uh, one, a family of five from Iraq, and then a family of three from Afghanistan. And we were able to find housing for both families. And we were able to furnish the house completely the furnishings, bedding, the cutlery in the drawers, the food containers, the lamps, the pillows, everything. And I'll tell you that Cork's budget for furnishing these homes is zero. So out of nothing, we created these two beautiful homes for these families. But it really isn't out of nothing, is it? All of that comes from a variety of sources. It comes from members of this congregation and the Winfield uh, congregation donating things. It comes from scanning Facebook Marketplace for the freebies and the giveaways. It comes from approaching people selling things on Facebook Market for a low price and saying, well, would you consider donating? It comes from the Mission Thrift Store, this thrift store, the Women's Shelter, and the Winfield Thrift Store opening up their doors to these families and saying, help yourself to whatever you need. But it also is Century 21 donating the moving van. It's my, my minivan having all the chairs taken out and picking up these things from all over. It's people that find out we need a very specific thing and going out and purchasing that. All of this is what creates that. And it's not nothing. It takes time and it does take financial resources, the stores are donating, the congregations are donating. There's lots of people that also donate financially to Cork so that we can give a monthly support for these families. We need all of that for this to happen. And this church is very much the same. This church needs the time and the volunteerism or things like Tuesday morning would not happen. But we also need the finances. There are, there are bills to be paid. There's staff to be paid. There are groceries to be bought for, all of, for our programs. The church needs that. It doesn't come out of nothing. It comes out of us, our love, our dedication, our kindness, and our way of following how we were taught. So next week, um, the stewardship campaign will be sending out the envelopes in the mail, or probably handed out here if you're attending physically. And it will be asking you to consider your stewardship pledge for next year. Financially, yes, but also your time and your talents, because we need all of that for this work to continue. Thank you. Thank you, Jodine. In the Old Testament, the Torah, God's blessing was seen as recognizing the goodness that is within each and every person and encouraging that to grow and be more fruitful. 
Uh, may God's blessing continue to be on the stewardship campaign and all that we put our hearts and minds into in this community. The rest of the announcements today, uh, this is uh, Sunday School Appreciation Sunday. We give thanks for our volunteers, uh, Sunday School teachers and leaders, Arata, Lie, Lie, Brock, and Suki. Thank you. Next Sunday, October the 27th, uh, we have a potluck following the service, so please bring some food to share, and please uh, don't forget to take your dish home to uh, wash. Thank you. Next uh, World Cafe is coming up on Saturday, November the 9th. The topic is loneliness. See uh, Friday's e-letter for more details, or come by the welcome table today during fellowship time after the service in the hall to register or for more information. The Christmas Craft Fair is on Saturday, November the 16th. After the service, there will be, a, there will be sign up sheets in the hall for volunteers to staff the fair for food, for the bake sale and cafe. Shelley, Myrna and Beryl will be out in the hall for the next four Sundays. If there are no other announcements for the community, then we will, uh, we will listen and appreciate this gift of music from Alleluia Singers.
as the offering is brought forward, I invite us into a moment of silence to consider the gifts that we all bring. Friends, let us pray. Ever present God, with this offering, we present also ourselves, all that we have been, all that we are, and all that we shall become, and our resolve to walk in your way. Accept us and our offering, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. In the prayers of the people, let us pray. Loving God, there is so much to be thankful for, so much we don't understand, like, well, like birds and microbes and, and the beasts that swim in the sea and the ones that populate the land and the ones that are so big we can't take them in with one glance and the ones that are so small we barely know they're there, except someone's told us. We give thanks for the wonderful ways in which the creation that you put here spinning in space comes together and works for the benefit of all. We give thanks for beauty and for blessing. We give thanks for sunrise and sunset, for the full harvest moon, for friends and for family, for those other relations who gather around us and abound on the earth as we do. We give thanks that we continue to live in a place where our conversations are passionate, but not so passionate that, that we can't work them out at a ballot box or in some kind of conversation. We give thanks that we live in a community where we are trying to figure out the best way to respond to your insistence to love and that we still have time to be patient with one another as we try and figure it out. We give thanks for this world where we are still so consumed by passion and need and sometimes greed that there are those who pause and respond, who reach out, who put themselves at risk to go into places of anguish and suffering and bring a measure of peace and kindness and love to this aching world. We give thanks for them, for all those who do what they can to bring about Christ's call to love and bless one another in this aching and hurting world. Loving God, we give thanks for our friends and our family, for those who are close to our hearts right now. And in our, our hearts, we offer in silence or aloud those who are on us now, those who we carry with us. Loving God, hear our prayers as we know your love responds. Hear our prayers for our friends in worship in Pacific Mountain region, in the various houses of worship and places where we come together, in buildings and in fields and forests. We give thanks for this world where many of us walk in the path of Christ and many others respond to your call to love in many other ways by many other names knowing the one true voice of love in their own hearts, in their own way. Loving one, there is so much to bless you for, so much to respond to. Hear us then as we sing together the words that Jesus taught his friends and they taught ours. <laughs>
sing our closing hymn, May the God of Hope Go With Us. Please be seated. Hmm. Okay. In the blessing, I, I wanted to share a story that I was blessed by this morning at our earlier worship before I offer a, a full blessing to you. In our earlier worship, we were talking about different ways that we do things in our society and our culture, and one of us related a story about a time when he was in a church many, many years ago, and the minister uh, preached a sermon extolling the virtues of a particular political party, which might have been on the left of the spectrum, and how it kind of rankled him a bit because he didn't really support that particular political party. So he said that when he got up during prayers of the people, he offered a prayer of thanksgiving for the, the corporate capitalist system and all the benefits it brought to this church and paid the bills for the church, which I thought was very interesting. And I thanked him because I hadn't known anybody who was willing to take responsibility for that system. And... <laughs> Now I know, so Evans and I are going to talk a little bit later. We are blessed by so many perspectives, right? So many people around the circle, so many life experiences, so many ways of coming together. That is a blessing of church. We are blessed in each and every one of you. As my indigenous elders have said, in each and every one of you, there is the light of the creator dancing. And we give thanks for the dance and the light. And if we give thanks that you are out there in the world, wherever you are, whatever part of the system you occupy, however you're in conversation, dancing in light and bringing kindness and joy. And when you're a little bit tired and not having the energy, know that God's light dances all around you, just waiting to be received. May we all know this on this day and all days. And now let's join in our, our new closing commission song. <laughs> 